So today on Stuart Talk, we have a Mind, Body, and Soul edition. Today we have Mrs. Bridget Ampasa. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? Doing good. Um, you are, what was your job title again? I am a school psychologist. School psychologist, very much needed, especially in today's society and what's going on in the world to be able to be there for the youth, um, so they can have somebody to come to. Um, when different things are going on and to be able to help strengthen them up. Um, first question will be, um, when did you decide that you wanted to go into that field? Um, 20, senior year of college, because I was trying to look for other, like what to do with the bachelor's in psych and you can't really get a job <laughs> like that. You got to do more schooling. Yeah. So um, I actually learned about it through a Google search. I searched some of my interests into Google. So I searched my major, which was psychology and some of my minors, which was surrounding education. So I put psychology and education jobs. Yeah. Google search <laughs> and um, school psychologists came up. So I was like, what is that? Never heard of it. Didn't know if we had them when I was going through school. Um, as I read more about it, it's like, oh, this kind of fits to what I'm doing, kind of how I was helping my college community too, because working with students, I did a lot of volunteer stuff, so it just kind of worked. So. It worked. So what would you say was your uh, different, did you have any struggles um, starting into the field or entering in the field? Did you deal with any uh, situations or struggles or or was it smooth? You mean like the application process or you, like you just talked the about? Job, it, the job itself, going in oh, there because you already, start, you already <laughs> starting off, um, you're a woman, you're African-American woman yeah. and a woman in that field. So was it different struggles with the things that you had to go through? Yeah, for sure. So when, so I'm from up North. So moving down to the South right after grad school, just, I was new to the state, new to yeah. the city, new to the field. And then, like you said, like young black woman. Yeah. So um, it definitely was hard because I felt initially like I need to solve everyone's answers and have all the answers and kind of like go towards people pleasing, which is a very natural uh -huh. thing for me to do. Um, yeah. But I also had to learn to set boundaries because I'm in this new space and everyone just wants to pull on you, you know, kind of thing because of the role too. Yeah. And I also felt because I was young and I was black and all my peers were pretty much not that yeah. they were white, <laughs> um, just having to like, I felt like I had to kind of be more, be on top of things. And um, yeah, like I had to know and have all the answers because people were coming to me to seek, you know, answers. So it definitely, you know, I feel like I had to assert myself more, you know, to try to link yeah. it to what I lacked or what I felt like I lacked because I was yeah. young. So when did you begin to know uh, the confidence inside or when did you know who God made you to be and you were able to walk in it or is you still going through that as we speak? Um, I'm definitely still going through that because um, I am typically the observer, you know, I'm just like, okay, let me see. So I'm typically more reserved, but I've been trying to be obedient. Like when God wants me to speak, like yeah. here we are at this platform <laughs> um, yeah. and just other things. So, but it's also, you know, just kind of having the experiences that I have had, kind of remembering those in my back pocket and how God has always brought me through and kept me through or taken me through something. So I have a lot to, like, I have a good track record. So yeah. that kind of helps with the confidence to just know, but you know, every now and again, you're like, can I do this? Then, then I have to remind myself, <laughs> yes, yes, I yeah. can. <laughs> so the million dollar question is, which I say to people that's in your field, uh, okay. you guys, you guys absorb so much. People pour so much inside you guys that you go home drained. How do you balance um, work with going to church, serving because you you serve at church and being able to be there, helping from everybody, meeting everybody needs and all like that? How do you stay grounded and stay connected to God so you can re-energize or you can get feel back up? Um, I definitely think over the course of when I first started in this job, my faith looked different than five years in now. So, you know, just kind of having that support system, that's my family there, you know, we grew up 
Christian in the church, all that, um, like my support system of friends. And of course, even God just like praying and yeah. got to be like this with him because <laughs> it's just, it's very real conversations, right? Like prayer is just a conversation with the Lord. So really pulling on him, um, has helped me. Um, yeah. a lot of times when I feel less than competent, even though I know that's not really true, you know, just really, really incorporating using that Holy Spirit because <laughs> right. it, you, have to, you have to speak into yourself. Do you, you have, have to? you have every day. So yeah. like, I'll look at myself in the mirror, you know, do the whole positive affirmation, self um, affirm myself, but it's the everyday kind of thing. So usually I'm just like, Lord, when I drive in the car off to work, you know, I'm yeah. like, Lord, control the day, <laughs> the, meetings, right. the students I got to evaluate, like everything. Yeah. So Right. How do you yeah. practice self-care in your profession, being that you are, like I said, meeting the needs of others? How do you practice self-care as far as for you, whether pampering yourself, whether giving your day, uh, your, yourself a day or going to get the, your favorite food or do that because you're serving so much and you're being a, a steward and a disciple? So how do you practice self-care and making sure you're there to meet the needs that you may need? Um, one thing that I had to become more comfortable with is saying no. And when I, mm -hmm. someone was like, no, is a full sentence. I said, absolutely. You're, you're absolutely right. <laughs> so <laughs> a lot of times I'll just say no. Like when I feel that I am becoming spent um, mm -hmm. more so than my capacity is, I'll say no. Um, I'll put a, a pause on it. Like, you know, even if it's socially, because sometimes I just need to be by myself to re-energize. Um, I love plants. So I became a plant uh -huh. throughout this process, you know. So you can um, help me with my banana tree, your banana plant. I don't know to about that plant, but. Somebody gave me one. I planted it in the ground and it died. Did but you put up on it? No, I didn't. I just you was so did. happy I finally had got one. Where are you from up north? I'm from Maryland. Okay, see, I'm from Ohio. So, you know, me coming down here, it's a different transition yeah. um, as well. Um, do you pray over your work location, your office, um, or before you go in there, being that you deal with different spirits and different uh, people and personnel, or do you, are you cautious of them touching you because you know different spirits and different emotions can, you know, get transmitted with a touch, a different thing like that? How do you handle all the above? Um, so as far as people, um, like, touching, I, I guess I don't, like, I don't actively kind of, you know, <laughs> like, oh, you know, but um, I usually like I when I pray over the day, I usually pray for who I encounter or right. might encounter students I work with um, meetings, parents I talk to. Um, but I don't think I don't really address like the touch as far as like my office space. I'm a big like my anointing oil. So when I first, you know, every the start of every year, you know, I'll usually anoint and pray over my office space, like where the kids um, sit. So I'll also consult with teachers and things. So that yeah. on that end, got it covered. But the touching, yeah, I haven't really thought about that. Yeah. Yeah. What are some challenges you see today in the youth, in the schools, and just in the world as today? Um, definitely like emotion regulation. And I think that kind of goes hand in hand with conflict resolution, because those skills don't seem to be taught. Like yeah. I remember having a counselor come in and we get pulled out, go into different groups and have peer mediation. And so yeah. we're, we're mediating things with our peers. I don't really see that, at least in the schools that I serve. Yeah. Um, so when we think of just how children whose minds aren't even fully developed, <laughs> like try to handle a conflict and whether that's verbally aggressive, physically aggressive, I think it just that, that seems to definitely be lacking. Mm -hmm. And then I, I think that goes hand in hand with, you know, emotion regulation, because if something happens to you, one person responds here and the other person like takes it over here and then you have different levels of responses. So I yeah. think when you don't have that regulation in your emotions, you could go zero to a hundred real quick. And that isn't always the best, you know, process. And also like the thinking things through. Yeah. The youth is, is a challenge for them. I'll just say that. Not that they don't have the skills, it's just a challenge. Yeah. Uh, how do you approach counseling um, from a Christian perspective, being in the schools? Do you mean like providing counseling to students? Or, or in your field, how would you uh, approach it from a Christian perspective? 
Um, so <laughs> I kind of tread lightly just because I think that's one thing, one thing that isn't, you know, always promoted in the school setting. Yeah. So you do kind of have to be cautious and children can easily be like, oh, mom, so, you know, <laughs> you know, so they were telling me about this. Um, so I think I just kind of, usually if some things come up, what I usually will do was, is that I'll rephrase and affirm the student. Um, yeah. So like still incorporating those positive, like you are, you're not, you're loved and this and that, um, some of those principles without just going and mentioning God, you know, just because I'm trying mm -hmm. to, um, but sometimes like I might follow up with, depending on the situation, on the child too, I might follow up with the parent and then like kind of gauge what their, you know, position in faith is. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, it, just see how that conversation goes, but I don't directly just go that way. I, I try other, you know, build the kid up, you know, encourage them, things like that. So all, you know, practices of that without being like you need to know the lord so, <laughs> you know because it can yeah just in the schools it's it's a little different um so like um do you do you think that your area of work is um at a good place or do you think it's room for improvement to be able to better fulfill the needs of the youth today um i definitely think there is a lot of room for improvement i think mental health as a whole is becoming you know more normalized more talked about people talking about therapy um but i do still think there is a large stigma especially communities that look like us you know black and brown communities so yeah. just even like their access to mental health either parents don't know they just lack the knowledge um what's available what mental health is versus what it isn't so i think there's definitely a lot of room to you know kind of further educate so um being that a lot of people saying they got mental health or like some people really got it where it's a problem where other people just using it what is your determination in that do you kind of use the holy spirit being that you're a christian and you're saved to be able to give you the unction or is it still you still take the same steps as you would for one versus the other if you got a repeat offender and you guys see that it's not no problem that it's just you know uh crying wolf versus somebody that's really going through it yeah um that's a really good question i definitely again like before i even if i Okay, how does that? Before I know I'm gonna work with a student, and even if I don't, you know, I'm usually like calling the Holy Spirit to just be sensitive in general because you never know um, what a student might say. And so in training, when you are like a mental health professional, you know, it's not really your job to decipher, like they're telling the truth, they're lying. Yeah. Um, because you you just never know, like you think someone's lying, and then just you know, being a mandated reporter, all of that stuff. But I will say that. You know, um, I usually try to get to more of like the roots of it and kind of definitely establish that rapport so there is a sense of trust. Um, yeah. When I'm in the schools and it's more of a behavior, like at my high school or something like that, or even middle school, you know, I'm usually like, there's really no reason to lie here because either I have like, you know, what has been told to me. So like, you might as well just tell me the truth. And usually yeah. they're like, oh, you know, like I, but I have that kind of rapport where they do feel comfortable to share. So yeah, it's a little bit of both. Okay. Do you, do you just stay in the school system or do you got an office outside it or you just work during the school year and you're off during the summer? The latter. Yes. So I work during the school year. I'm off during the summer. Uh, my office, I, we are school-based in my district. So that means we have an office at each of our schools or like an office space. We might share one, um, but we do serve in the schools. What do you think the mindset is with people want to see a psychologist or a therapist or some or counseling of some sort? They think they might have um, had a bad experience or even they don't believe in it, it's not gonna work for me and that. How do you um, be able to redirect that? Um, them dealing from past hurts or dealing with them just thinking that it's not going to help them. How do you um, change that to where you can be effective, even though their thinking is different? Because, you know, we are transformed by the renewing of our mind. So you have mm -hmm. to, you know, think differently. And if you keep thinking, a, you know, a negative way, you're not going to get no good results because you're not even trying to, you know, just like in recovery, they say the first step is admittance. I got a problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think like you just 
honestly, like I will typically remind people like you got to trust the process, right? So sometimes I'll liken it to if you were like sick physically, like where you went to like a physician, like a doctor, um, yeah. you know, if they told you whatever treatment, you know, like when you take medication, it's like, take this for this amount of weeks. If you're just like, oh, it doesn't work. And you just, you're done with it. You don't see the end results, even though it might, you know, take a process. So that's usually try to how I try to, you know, kind of compare it just to see something through. Right. And then I, um, like you got to take action steps. Like you have to make the choice every day to, you know, address your mental health or whatever. If you want to see the difference, there are some people who, you know, kind of stuck in their ways and they're, or they're a little bit, you know, um, like hesitant, which, you know, from past hurt, got it, but you gotta, if you want something to change, you gotta be willing to see something through. Yeah. So, um, what does faith look like to you and what does faith mean to you? Um, my faith is a very large part of who I am. Again, just thinking about how I grew up, but really thinking about just when I, when everything else seems to be falling apart or not how I want it to go. Like I, I always have something, I always have got to not fall back on, but you know, he's, I know he's always going to be there. Um, yeah. again, like I said, like my track record, he's never, never left me, never left me in a situation where I was just completely alone, even though I might have felt it. So especially on days where I'm like, don't want to do this. <laughs> like I'm very resistant to, you know, continue working or be in the job in the field. Cause there's a lot of systems in place, you know, that kind of try to. So, you know. so that was going to be some of what my next question was. So okay. being a here, I'm going to ask you a question real quick. How do you be able to get your feelings in check because you know what you're dealing with? You know the, the the powers that be, you know, that put the different laws, rules, regulations in there when you know certain stuff ain't right or you seeing that you're starting to get emotionally attached to something or close to a situation. What do you do when that happens? Do you have to get close to God and pray about it for it don't mess your day up? Yes. So one thing that I've been practicing probably the last two years, maybe since like the start of COVID when we had to go back to work, the, that was very rough, but especially with how our district was handling things. But um, one thing was I just kind of kept in mind was like, okay, I allowed myself to feel my feelings. I'm like, Lord, you gave me emotions. You did. Yeah. So I'm going to feel them, but I don't allow myself to sit in them, if that makes sense. So either like, I'll give myself like, okay, an hour, I'm venting, I'm hot, I feel what I feel. I'm like, okay, so then I bring it back. I'm like, but you know, what is the one thing I can do today to address like how I'm feeling? What's the one thing I can do today to turn around, like whatever. So usually I'm like, Lord, you, I need, I'm giving them to you. Like I'm giving you my emotions. I I express them to him. I'm like, I need you to intervene because I clearly cannot. So yeah. that definitely helps me just bring myself down. Like, I don't feel like I'm dismissing myself from my emotions, like, because I'm allowing myself to feel them, but I'm not allowing myself to sit in them and just become unproductive. You know? Do you be, is it the same way? But be, you said when you first started, you wanted to save everybody. You wanted to do that. When did it kind of balance yourself out? Do you still struggle with that? Because you want to be able to be there. And I know you have the heart after God. You want to be able to them. So there's some people that is just a lost cause and you ain't nothing you can do, but you still have the reaction and effect, a feelings of trying to be there versus other people you still want to do it. How do you balance yourself and deal with that? Yeah, it's definitely hard. So it's a constant work in progress. Um, just something I'm actively working on doing, especially because I think for me, what I realized and learned by myself is I, if I can get to a level of peace, then I'm like, okay, then I feel okay at night. At the end of the day, I'm not sleeping, you know, with that still on my head, but like, okay, I've done, I've pulled on all the resources. I've consulted with all the people about this student and their needs and what they're, what I can do for their family and the rest, you know, I'm like it's in the Lord's hands because a lot of times the school can only do so much. Like I can only do so much as a school psychologist. Um, and they're like, there's gotta be some pull from other, you know, avenues. But if I truly believe I've exhausted all resources and people and supports, then I usually can get to a place of peace. But before I didn't know how to do that. So I was like, oh my gosh, we're gonna do about this kid and they can't read. And you know, they're fighting, you know, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
what are some ways we can help as a community, even with the school system, to make sure we are doing the best thing for the kids and their, um, their future? Um, so I would definitely say like having conversations and conversations is very broad. So let me specify like those honest, direct, Bible-based conversations, um, because those you know, like it's really easy to tell it, like to kind of steer a child in the way you want them to go. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it needs, you, you gotta do that correctly. Like, you know, in yeah. like the Holy Spirit. So parents, like, you know, how you're talking to your children, it should be an open conversation, not in a dismissive way, but it's things are gonna come up in life. And so we have to be, a, we have to be equipped, you know, with our word, in our word, in our prayer so that we can, you know, correctly navigate, you know, some of those things that children are going to deal with, right? So before they kind of experience it for themselves alone without guidance and yeah. for a healthy instruction, you know, like at least having, starting that at home. Um, I think another thing is just trying to be as like as informed, well-informed as possible. So the school is not gonna get everything right. They don't always have the best intentions. So like as parents and communities, like we really have to educate ourselves on things that are happening in school. So any correspondence that comes from a school, like we need to be knowing the ins and outs because again, not everyone has the best interest. Like you don't wanna think that way, but that is unfortunately the reality. So I think just like that constant communication that's very transparent, that's happening at dinner tables, happening in the car ride, like, we got to like normalize just being transparent with our students and our kids. Yeah, 100 percent agree. Uh, walking in Christ and being on fire for God as you are and still being the best at your job and endure what you have to. What gives you the desire to press on and to continue? Um, so as a school psychologist, the a large part and really just at the base, at the top, in the middle, whatever, is really advocating for students and their families. So thinking about students, children don't really have a voice, right? Because they're a vulnerable population, period. So just making sure, like, I just, I love children so much. And I feel like there's so much that they offer that sometimes adults, we don't, we forget about. We're like, oh, they're going to stay in a child's place. But <laughs> they have things to offer they have intuition and insight so I think I just want to make sure that it's expressed and that they're built up because I see so many children who are not and then you know they're so easily attacked right not saying that things won't happen and experiences won't happen but just building them up so that they at least have some line of defense right as they're you know learning in their faith or you know walking in that so I just think about the children that don't have a voice and the families that don't have a voice. So that kind of keeps me, that definitely keeps me going. It always has, so. <laughs> what um, steps are you taking to build generational wealth for you and your family to leave a, le leave a legacy? Um, so I definitely am all about like just being mentally free and whole because I definitely notice things, you know, gener generationally that we, we got, we got a break. We got a break. And I'm like, it starts, it's going to stop with my sister and I. So, um, yeah. but as far as well, just trying to be again, like as informed as I can about whether that's investing or properties and trying to like make, you know, use my knowledge to like expand um, upon my household, future generations. So definitely, definitely doing that. Do you do you get a lot of family and friends that come to you because of the field you're in that need your help and support and you like uh, guys I'm not at work. Yeah, friends, <laughs> um, strangers. I think like, but I also and that has definitely con been confirmed throughout my life that I'm in the right field. Like because people throughout my life have just randomly strangers on the metro when I used to live, you know, up north, just sharing, pouring. I'm like, I you don't you don't know me, that's not really appropriate. <laughs> like, you know, also not wanting to, you know, turn people away. So again, that's why boundaries is top tier, very important. But yeah, and sometimes I notice that I'll just kind of ask questions, like just be curious. Um, and I find that sometimes when you allow someone to just talk about, like talk out something, they kind of, you know, a lot of times can come to their own conclusion about like what you know, there might, their next step might be. I never wanted to be the one like, you need to do this, like give it, <laughs> but I'm like, well, 
have you thought about this? You consider, yeah. you know, kind of put it back on them. But yeah. So um, even in your serving, like, and, and being involved at church and, and being there, do you feel a sense of you walking in your purpose when you're doing it there? And even when you're at work, do you still feel that you're still walking in your purpose at both places because you're being a vessel and allowing God to use you because God blesses with all kinds of skills and abilities. So don't nobody do you like you do it. And he's blessed you with those skill sets to be able to be the best at your job. And even when we're at church, we're serving the youth or we're serving wherever it's a need at. So do you think both of them is um, kind of coexisting the same? Yeah, I... Yes, to answer your question, short answer. Um, I think at church, I definitely feel more of that like, okay, yes, you know, because at first I just started kind of once every now and again with the student ministry um, because yeah. it was like, well, I work with students. I probably should be involved. It kind of makes sense. You know, it was very like, eh. Um, but, you know, as I've just been serving more, I'm like, this is really, because I've been making those connections with students and other, you know, people who are on our staff and our team. So I definitely feel like, okay, I'm utilizing these skills from my current career. It makes sense. At work, um, it's it's a lot more variable, I guess, because this year I've never questioned myself more. So it's interesting, like at church, I'm like, yeah, this makes sense. And at work, I'm like, this is this is really still makes sense. Um, but I will say, I've so I've had to kind of be much more intentional about, okay, like remembering my why, like why did I first start, you know, doing this? Um, mm -hmm. So I, I definitely have been confirmed towards the end part of this school year, just like, thank you so much for, you don't know when you came in in the fall. And I'm like, I had no idea that people were still like remembering something I did or said or how I supported them. So those things, but it's had to be much more intentional because this year has been the most challenging. <laughs> it's like God is stretching you in this season. Yeah, he, he really is. <laughs> He's stretching you so you're about to give birth to something that he got for you that's destined for you. Um, is I kind of can look at it as, you know, when uh, a woman is pregnant, conceiving a child, how it starts off small, then it's growing, it's growing, it's growing. But then when it ain't no more room, it, the baby comes. So so God is stretching you, stretching you, and he's getting you ready um, to be able to have the capacity to give <laughs> you what you're doing, you know, um, so just get ready for that. And um, he's going to keep continue to use you because you got that heart after him. Because like you said, you got so many outs that you could not want to be involved to serve because of what you do. But you said, nah, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and do it. So you, you stepping up and you, you know, the seeds that you sow, just like you said, um, you didn't even know you said different things to it. I was talking to this, um, to this lady, her daughter had, um, graduated and she used to come to the youth Bible studies that I used mm -hmm. to, help, you know, send her encouraging messages, send her different encouragement. Like I do, yeah. like, you know, so I, I just do that because I got to hire out the people. So I, I do it and be consistent. And sometimes I don't know that it's hitting at that direct time where they need it. And she said, you know what? My daughter always said how you leave encouraging messages and how you were able to like be there and like, you know, and, and, and it touched her to where she appreciated. And it's like, we don't do stuff for the glory. I want God to get the glory. It's so much time that we already got to watch and make sure that we walk it right because people right. so judgmental. They're judging mm -hmm. us on Quick. You're supposed to be a Christian. Okay. That's their favorite line. But like you said, you can get mad. It says in the Bible, be angry, but sin not. Yeah. You know, you owe no man nothing but to love him. You know, different right. things like that. And as long as we are not allowing our heart to get hardened by the different things, then we can be able to still live this life because people need to see that we're not perfect. Ain't nobody perfect but God. That's what right. they need to they so busy judging this and that with this looking like instead of you know ironing out their insecurity their wrong and their weaknesses and giving it to God because you know when we weak God strength is made whole in our weaknesses to be able to help us just like how we was talking about like ministering to the youth he got to stretch us and open us up to be able to do it it might be nervous at the beginning or we might be like man Lord, yeah. <laughs> I'm about to be this I'm gonna do cool you second guessing yourself but when you're doing that you're worrying and you ain't just walking in your purpose because when you're walking in your purpose and you're doing stuff he gonna take you through it and he gonna be like God it couldn't have been nothing nobody mm -hmm. but you to get me 
through this. I don't care if it's kids, okay. if it's toddlers. Yeah, that part. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I think, like, too, when you just allow yourself, like, you just yield yourself to the Lord, to the Holy Spirit, you know, like, then you don't have to worry. You worry less about, like, am I going to say this correctly? And I don't want to offend, like, you know, just like, Holy Spirit, whatever you it is you want me to say to deliver to these people, you know, or these children. So I think, like, that's what I've trying to been that's what I've had to remind myself of, like, okay, like, I don't have to worry about, will I say this right or whatever, as long as I'm just like, Lord, just, I need you, to, however you want me to be used, let me just yield myself to my own will and how I think it's supposed to go, and then you, to give you room to do your thing, you know, so I kind of try to get out of my head, so that definitely. Speaking in, in, in front of people are probably talking, because you talk very well, like, you know what I'm saying, so I don't Little see, do like, you know. <laughs> Uh, I said, little do you know, um, yeah, before this, I was, yeah, and it's like, even <laughs> like going to leader for hearing apostle say, you, you're supposed to bend this stuff, so why don't you do it, like, you're supposed to bend and roll the book, why don't you write the book, you're supposed to be able to open this up, is there anything, other things that you want to do, that you're thinking about doing in the future, whether it be yeah. like a or whether it be like a, a CD because you're a singer, you're going to drop that single? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got jokes. You got jokes. Um, <laughs> well, may, not the musical, not 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 that route, but um, definitely like, so I've been told people, the people want a children's book. And I said, oh, okay. But I used to write and I think I just kind of put that away, you know, just for fear and will this make me money, you know? So yeah. that's something that's one thing. Um, but I also like enjoy in addition to writing, like blogging and posting and traveling, I love to eat and I want mental health and self-care to just be like, boom, everyone's yeah. doing it. Everyone's loving it. So, so how, can we get, how can we get that jump started then well, as far as the mental health and, and uh, how, how what, what case can you, can you do you think that that can be possible to get started? Cause it's what is it's needed. Yeah. <laughs> You sound just like everybody else. So I must be needing to do this, huh? Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yes, right. keep, hold me accountable. You know, I need people to keep me accountable <laughs> because I think like for a lot of times, like the fear and like, oh my God, will I say this right? But it just needs to be said, you know, that kind of thing. So I definitely need to step out of the fear part and just produce and create because I have all these ideas, write them down, you know, but the fear is like, and you journal, you journal a lot, right? Yeah. I do. <laughs> so, you know, you saying people telling you, so that means they're on your side in agreement. So yeah. where two are gathering in the mix, he is hey, there. You better, amen. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, that's even like with me doing this, like I have, like I used to do like certain stuff, and certain things I wanted to do. So I'm like, I'm just about to step out and start doing it. And even the, the, the videos and the interviews and things I'm putting out, people is, man, that was really good. I enjoyed that. And, um, you know, I love sports, so I implemented a way that I could bring the youth in. Uh, so I spotlight players. So now, you know, I'm allowing them to talk about working hard, talk about never quitting, talk about their faith. You know, I'm able to slide, okay, what does faith mean to you? What is family? And then I'm able to say, well, you know, God has blessed you with those skills and ability, you know, so you be able to utilize them the right way or be able to give thanks because, you know, God is bless you do you know your identity in christ or you know um continue to be what you are like telling them you could be something so just like different right. things like that i have been you know doing that just because like it's needed but sometimes you do you do second guess yourself or sometimes you don't say the right word it's like mm -hmm. i do something i might say something but, oh my god I said <laughs> one wrong. look out of 500 things i just said I, I'm, I'm talking about that one little thing so hey. <laughs> God gonna do something for all of us in this season, yes. and He can just allow us to be able to walk in our purpose and, you know, be um, creative in any way that we can. That it's effective, you know, because we're not just gonna be doing stuff to just do it. Time is something we can't get back, mm -hmm. so you know, take the time to be able to do something for it can be pure and, and beneficial to others. Yeah, that's so that's so good and that's so true. It's like I was listening to um uh, Sarah Roberts and how she was just saying how people hold on.
to different stuff and they're not trying to take accountability. They're not trying to, you know, get healed. But if you hold in stuff so long, then it's going to cause your body to start. Mm -hmm. up and in it's going to spill out like yeah. in ways that you don't want it to, weren't expecting. So, yeah. And, and it causes trauma. Like the, the, the couple of things is people, stress, trauma and environment and unaddressed trauma causes the body to overwork itself things we carry on it affects us emotionally you know our body is trying to tell us something but sometimes we override it sometimes we yeah. don't listen to it like you said going to sleep at a good time and, and making sure that you doing the things you need to do that makes sure your body is doing cool and all people stand up they wonder why they tired on three or four hours, crazy, which i'm guilty of because i like snacking and eating and stuff like that <laughs> you said i'm gonna eat better so but all that it, it plays a part because now you eating and now your body is your temple. So you got to take care of it. You know, our right. body responds to the atmosphere. We can't hold things inside, you know, so, um, and we have to allow discipline to play a major factor in what yeah. we take part in our body, what we watch, what we listen to and, you know, who we're around and different things like that. Because I'm, telling you people around me that can strengthen me or people that I can pour into it that I can be there with because I know I'm consistent and I know you know I want the best for them and I'm you know want to allow God to use me as being close to them because if you cool with somebody or your friends or somebody and you can't help them what's your purpose what you just put them, yeah. <laughs> you're just pulling them down just there taking them space yeah so um <laughs> And, and, and with the mental health thing and the different things, like how would that look with what you're trying to do or, you know, think about it, even in the future? How would that look as far as getting that started? And what ways would you want to be effective in doing that? Like, what would, it, what would your goals be and geared to do? Like, what would be the challenges you would have to go after? Um, I definitely think, like, when I think about just how and who it could reach and help, you know, um, because I'm also African. So there's also, you know, an underlying side, you know, it's very, you know, integrated about just like our approach to mental health, therapy, trauma, not talking about things, dismissing things. So it, there's layers to it. Um, I don't know. I think just, you know, when it comes to normalizing and mental health is wellness, like yeah. That gives us a sound mind, right? Like that's what we have, you know? So I think just, um, I think with things that are of God, you know, you're always going to come into that like warfare. So yeah. knowing how yeah. to combat that and again, being equipped so that you can combat that um, effectively is going to be huge. Um, but it's just, it has to be a part of our everyday conversations, our everyday life, like our mental health as wellness. It, it just yeah. is. <laughs> I was, as you were speaking, I was just thinking like we, we could start with scripture, foundation and spirit, scriptures, because your foundation on anything that you put down and do got to be strong. You know, you know the story, the man built his house on a solid foundation yeah. when the wind, rains came and stayed there. The other one who did yeah. it on the sand. Watched the rain. So just I having, just thought on that. That was my lesson from foundation. Oh, I was? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, in my Martin voice, we here. <laughs> yeah but yeah have a, <laughs> no scriptures to be able to hold because even when you have like uh what is it called when you do something it's called the um what is the like buildings foundations and stuff like that they have a, a thing that they like not do, uh what is it called um uh, what like a foundation what is it like like you know organization they have like what's the main thing but it, it's in something like it might be in a book it's called a certain word i can't think of it the, um, the theme uh it, it's, kind of, it's kind of like a theme but it's like what they go to but it's a certain word that they use it's like the foundation of it but it, it's called something watch out watch when it's over i, I know right i'm like oh that's, that makes sense <laughs> so uh but yeah, so so just just having one of them to be able to look and, and build upon, that would be key is everything too. Because if we, we don't do it as, as sons and daughters of Christ, like who gonna do it? We can't wait till the world do it because what they doing, eliminating the different yeah. books and, and, and literature and they trying to act like certain stuff that is an important part of our history. They taking it out yeah. of the book. 
Yeah, that's why I'm like, we got to have the, like, there's so much learning and education that should be taking place from birth, even like in utero, like developmentally, when you just look at the research. But anyways, like zero to five, right? Before a child gets to kindergarten, like there should be several things that like we're talking about in the home or ex exposing them to, you know, so that we can, you know, it just... <sighs> It's got to start like and be consistent and it's got to be well communicated to parents and yeah, so whenever that you started whenever it do get started just know i'm here on the front line ready to go to war with you <laughs> you try to get the thing whatever i can do you know i'm always willing definitely appreciate it because yeah. it is what's needed and i appreciate you taking the time to sit and have this conversation yes. today, yeah. um, really appreciate. It. Yeah, so we have we have more to come, and you know okay. different other topics. We will have you back on get and talk, but I just speak oh. blessings, speak life, and may God open up doors for you. May He put you around mm -hmm. all the people that you need to be around um, at the right appointed time, and may He have all the people that ain't supposed to be in your life be away from you. May He pull them away from you, and may you be to walk in your assignment and your purpose, fullness, bold, fresh fire, yeah. fresh anointing, fresh revelation like never before, and you will not be scared. Uh, we rebuke anything or any thoughts that's coming against the will of God and what he's trying to do for you. You will walk, you will be bold, you will be mighty, you will be courageous, and you will do it in Jesus' name. So Amen. just walk in and see about it. Thank you. Thank you. I received it. it. Um, I'm about to stop this. I got to ask you something real quick. So hold on, let me do it. Stop.